Welcome to the Out of Bounds Breed Podcast, where we help inform and grow the community around common weakness enumeration and common attack pattern enumeration and classification. This podcast is produced by the MITRE Corporation with funding from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Hi, this is Steve Batista. I'm on the community engagement team for the CWE program and your host of the Out of Bounds Read podcast. Today's guest is Rushi Pruitt, a lead cybersecurity engineer at MITRE. He's a technical lead handling several years of the CWE top 25 most dangerous software weaknesses. Today, we're going to talk about the new 2021 release of this list. Welcome, Rushi. Hey, thank you, Steve. Pleasure to be here. Great. So why did the team create the top 25 list to begin with? It goes back um, uh, to over uh, a decade now, Um, but basically the um, idea was formed to come up with a set of uh, weaknesses that could be used to inform programmers on how to eliminate the most common weaknesses before the software is even shipped out. And that's where the idea uh, of, you know, top 25 list came from. And it has, uh, you know, evolved in methodologies over the years, but essentially the original intent has remained and uh, it's still still our main way of providing a tool for education and awareness to help programmers Uh, essentially preventing uh, the kinds of weaknesses that plague the software industry. Wow, over a decade. When was the uh, original one published? So it's uh, 2009. That's when the first list was published, and that continued until 2011. And then, uh, you know, that nothing much happened in the methodology or uh, anything to that effect after that. So the CW team picked the work up back in 2019 with a new methodology. So with that methodology, did experts just make an educated guess or is there some kind of empirical evidence that you guys base stuff on? So the original list uh, that was created in 2011 and the original list that was created in 2009, which continued until 2011, was um, formed from the experts' uh, survey responses. And the groups that were involved in in forming that basically comprised of the SANS Institute, MITRE, obviously, um, through which we operate CWE, and uh, some of the most uh, famous security experts in in the U.S. as well as in Europe that uh, focused on software security. But since then, when we picked the work back up in 2019, we wanted to be able to provide a new data-driven methodology that uh, folks could relate to, but also automate some of their own testings off of. So that's where we decided that it would make sense for us to use the CVE data found within the NVD and use that uh, to ultimately um, allow us to determine severities as well as the frequencies of the the CVEs that uh, that are widely reported, but then their own mappings to CWEs to come up with a way for us to evaluate and produce our annual top 25 on a repeated basis. So NVD being the National Vulnerability Database, do you just pull results out of their database or do you double check them or is there any kind of processing on that? So so the short answer is it's a bit of both, right? So ultimately what winds up happening is we we have annual priorities of what we want to do with each year's top 25. And some of that is derived from uh, our conversations with NIST, uh, our sponsor, DHS, but also uh, what's happening in the in the wild at, uh, during uh, during that time. And using that to, and also our, our stakeholders, right, the community at large, uh, to basically help us uh, determine what would the community 
benefit most from in that particular year. And using that as a guiding mechanism, we come up with a particular um, focus area uh, for that year, and we prioritize the work around that focus area. But the other side to that is, Obviously, uh, you know, as you can imagine, CVEs uh, have uh, thousands and thousands of entries, and uh, so it's not feasible for for the CWE team to go through every single CVE and double check all of them and and come up with new suggestions. So for the ones we are not able to get to within that uh, calendar year, then we basically. Uh, ultimately wind up accepting the mappings that are already contained within the uh, the NVD data. Hmm. So so do you use just the 2021 vulnerabilities in the NVD website for the list? So we actually use uh, the, the previous two calendar years. So for the 2021 list that we recently published, we had use the 2019 and 2020 data, uh, CV data uh, within NVD uh, to provide us uh, the 2021 top 25 list. So you get to that top 25, how do you score it so that you know that it's the top 25? So the, the, the easiest way of understanding it is we look at it, uh, you know, the CWs that are already provided that we're not able to get to, they all have severity and uh, frequencies associated with it. So we ultimately do a normalization uh, relative to the minimum and maximum value seen uh, of those. But for the ones that we uh, ourselves, the CW team, are going through uh, and analyzing, we work with the NIST team to first uh, make sure that they're in agreement with uh, what we're suggesting to replace the original CW mappings with, and we have back and forth. And once that uh, final decision has been made, we basically, um, you know, use those new mappings that we're providing and uh, do similar frequency and severity um, scoring uh, formula that we have published on our website to allow us to determine um, top um, however many uh, the, CWEs we happen to find off of uh, the analysis that was performed, but also what's already provided within the data. And then we just uh, ultimately send an ordered list. So we just look through it and uh, that's how we get our top 25. Hmm. As someone who's been in this field for a long time, what are some of the trends where things are becoming less dangerous or less frequent or less of an impact over the last year? Okay, so so the best way of understanding this is simply looking at our, you know, uh, comparing 2020 and 2021 top 25 lists, right? And if you just were to focus on, let's say, um, I'll highlight the top three biggest uh, movements down uh, in, in 2021 lists, that will start to help you understand how things are, you know, moving around uh, as year to year changes. So for example, uh, let's look at CW200, right, which is exposure of sensitive information to an unauthorized actor. That CW200 was ranked number seven in 2020. In 2021, it fell to number 20. So as you can, uh, you know, it's a difference of 13. Um, so as you can see, that's happening. The other one is CW119, which is improper restriction of operations within the bounds of a memory buffer, which uh, was uh, number five in 2020 and uh, fell to number 17 in 2021. And lastly, CW732, which is incorrect permission assignment for critical resource, which was number 16 and, and fell to number 22 in 2021. So that's interesting because I always think that, you know, the operations within the bounds of a memory buffer or memory buffer issues are really in the front of my mind because when I started, that was the first kind of security things that came up. It's interesting that that's kind of going down. What's kind of new? 
Yeah, absolutely. So it is, you know, that that's the that's the beauty of the data set that we have, right? As uh, things are evolving, uh, new things come to light, uh, and certain um, old issues uh, may not be as prevalent uh, as obviously the industry is maturing, right? So that's the other key there. The some of the new entries that we now have in 2021 top 25 are. CWE 276, which is incorrect default permissions. And uh, in, in the last year, it was ranked number 41. And in, in the current year, it's ranked at number 19. The other thing is uh, CW 918, which is server-side request forgery, SSRF. It was 27 and uh, came to 24 this year. And lastly, uh, CW77, which is improper neutralization of special elements used in a command, uh, aka command injection. It was number 31 last year and is now ranked at number 25. Hmm. So if I'm trying to focus on the top 25, because I have to focus my resources somewhere, what are some of the ones that came off of the 2021 list that I wouldn't focus as much energy on? I mean, you're not going to stop paying attention to things beyond the tw top 25, but what shouldn't be that focus? What fell off? Right, and and uh, yeah, and that's that's the right way of looking at it, right? Like you, you only have limited resources available, so not everyone can be appropriately managed. Uh, so in order to prioritize that, uh, it's that's why we have the list of top 25. So certain things that came off from last year, um, you know, have to do with, uh, one of them has to do with CW400, which is uncontrolled resource consumption. It was at number 23 last year and is now uh, for position down uh, to number 27. The other one is uh, CW94, which is improper control of generation of code, uh, aka code injection. It was in position 17 and is now at position 28. And uh, the lastly is CW 269, which is improper privilege management. It was in position 22 and it's now at position 29. So, you know, now that I think about it, there's a lot of vulnerabilities that don't get CVEs. How do you include that in the list? So, so that's the uh, short answer is we we can't and uh, we don't. And uh, the idea is, you know, since we're leveraging CVE entries found within the NVD, we we whatever is widely reported and publicly available is how we form our top twenty five off of. So if there if something is a zero day that does not get captured into our analysis and we don't currently have a way of evaluating that. However, we are looking to closely work with NIST, um, other CNAs uh, and uh, the folks in the industry to help us get access to some more data that can potentially be used uh, to identify some some of the other lesser publicly known CVEs, uh, and then using that to provide CW mappings. Though I think even for some of the zero days, eventually they put out a CVE with information, correct? Just because it's a zero correct. day doesn't mean, yeah, okay, good. So I, I guess if I, if I found like some zero day and I fixed it, right, should you suggest that I should file a CVE anyway so that people know what's wrong? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that that would be uh, of tremendous help, right? And, uh, and, and you know, from an organization standpoint, one may think about it for, uh, as, um, you know, like, oh, uh, it, it may not be in the best light uh, to have uh, publicly known uh, vulnerability associated uh, with your organization's um, name. But as, as you think about it, we all make mistakes and software uh, is getting more and more complex day by day. And it's easier if we had a corpus of data that could allow us to ultimately determine what type of mistakes are being made across the board uh, overall uh, uh, by the industry 
we can then uh, create better mechanisms and processes to help us address some of these mistakes and streamline them uh, that through the means of automation to build out an ecosystem that uh, deals with them successfully. Yeah, I know you say sometimes it may not, you know, on the surface look good if there are CVEs with your software, but I know in previous work that I've done as, you know, as a reviewer, if software doesn't have any CVEs, it would tell me that it looks like no one's been reviewing it, which is actually worse than having CVEs. Just because they're not CVEs doesn't mean they're not there. So, you know. Precisely. Well, this has been a great conversation. Where can I go get the top 25? The easiest way to find uh, the current uh, 2021 top 25 list is simply uh, searching uh, for it on your favorite search engine, and uh, it will uh, lead you directly to cw.mita.org's website uh, to that particular page. And through just navigating on that page or on, on the site overall, you'll be able to access other previous lists, but as well as tons of other CW content and weakness related information. Oh, we'll put that link in the show notes. So if I wanted to add to the CWE, you know, content or or provide this, how how can I do that? Yeah, so the best way to do that is simply sending an email at CWE at MITRE.org. Let us know uh, how, how you'd like to help us out and uh, we love to collaborate with you and, uh, you know, work with you in, in updating our content. I know there's that meme of, uh, you know, how many CVEs do you have? I wonder if anybody ever asked how many CWEs you have. So that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so, so, yeah, yeah. That, that'd be fantastic. I mean, currently yeah. we're over, what, uh, 900 CWEs and counting? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's amazing how large it is. You know, you, you sometimes until you sit down and think about it, there are many ways that you can mess up software. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Well, thanks for the conversation. Oh, my pleasure. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I hopefully look look forward to many more of this in the future. Well, that's all for the Out of Bounds Read podcast. Another one is enumerated. See you at the next podcast. Thank you for listening to the Out of Bounds Read podcast, available on most podcast platforms and at cwe.mitre.org. Stay up to date and connect with us on Twitter at CWEKPEC.